Hello, I'm Mark Price. I'd like to talk to you today about Easter and the resurrection. He is risen. He is risen indeed. For many years at this time of year, I would tell a particular joke quite often, and the joke is this. A church at Easter was packed, absolutely full. The, 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 the pews, the seats, all packed with people. The church was so packed, people were lined up down the, down the walls, down the aisles, in the back, everywhere there were people for Easter service. Well, these two women on the side standing, because there were no seats, one said to the other, she says, do you see in the front row over there, do you see Mrs. So-and-so? And she said, yes. She says, do you know she goes to church every single day? You'd think she could stay home on Easter, make room for the rest of us. <laughs> Well, that joke's not as funny today, is it? There's plenty of room in our churches. Plenty of room, sadly. But uh, by the way, one positive note uh, this Easter, perhaps, is that for the first time in my life, I am likely to win the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> you see, as I am hunkered down here all alone in my place, I have hidden all the eggs, so I know exactly where to find them. So the positive thing is I may finally win the Easter egg hunt. The reading for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went in the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, again, happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. By the way, that's a saying it's been around a long, long time. It goes back, uh, they say, maybe to the 400s or, or perhaps before that. It comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 34, which says, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. The, our Protestant brothers and sisters and evangelical brothers and sisters seem to use it a lot more today than other churches, but within the Catholic and Orthodox Church, it's known as the Paschal Greeting. The, the Eastern Orthodox Church have a, a tradition, a belief, that it goes back to Mary Magdalene her, herself when she went and she met the face-to-face -to -face the Emperor Tiberius in Rome, and she greeted him with the words, Christ is risen. The res resurrection of our Lord is the game changer of all game changers. It took people who maybe had no faith or lukewarm faith and either brought them to faith or they walked the other way. And it took people who had strong faith and made them more secure in that faith. The game changer of all game changers. St. Paul, when he was talking to the church uh, in Athens, he was talking to a group called the Council of Areopagus, they're said to be the, the, the brightest people of all of Athens, the Council of Areopagus, and he was telling them all about Jesus. He was telling them about his teachings and, and his miracles, and they were listening, and they were actually engrossed in what he was saying. They were liking what he was saying until he brought up the resurrection. When he brought up the resurrection, they walked away from him. They said, you're nothing but an idle babbler. You see, the, the resurrection and how we respond to it really separates the wheat from the chaff, the, the, the sheep from the goats. It, it separates the, the believers from the non-believers. Even at the time of Jesus, you had, you had Pharisees and you had Sadducees, two different sects of Judaism. 
The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, and yet the Pharisees believed resurrection was possible. That may be why so many more uh, Pharisees would come to believe in Jesus rather than Sadducees. The, um, one of the people that has played a huge role for me in my faith is Simon Peter. He's here on my right shoulder. That's me playing Simon Peter. I've been portraying and performing Simon Peter since 1983. And Simon Peter, like the other apostles, Doubting Thomas, for example. Doubting Thomas, when he sees Jesus for the first time in the upper room after the resurrection, he shouts out, my Lord and my God. It brings us to a place of solid faith when we believe in the resurrection. But Simon Peter has played a special role for me in my faith walk. He is a person, and this is the brilliance of Jesus, he's an average person, an ordinary person, a person who is just like us, the every man. And you know that he lived for 35 more years after Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the dead and left the earth. Peter was living for another 35 years. And during that 35 years, he saw many or most of his friends were, were captured, they were, they were victimized, they were brutalized, they were murdered, they were executed, just for their belief in Jesus. He himself was arrested on multiple occasions, was beaten, and almost killed on different occasions. But for 35 years, he remained strong. Now think about this, the beauty of his being an average person. Think about any average person you know. If they were faced with their death, and all they had to do was stop talking, in this case about Jesus, don't you think they'd stop talking about him? <laughs> don't you think that the average person would stop talking about him? But you see, Peter couldn't do that. Peter couldn't, even though he knew his life was on the line, his own brother was crucified. They, even though he knew that his life was on the line, he could not stop talking about Jesus. And why? because he knew it was true. Jesus said to Thomas, when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he said, blessed are you, Thomas, for you have seen and you believe, but more blessed are those who have not seen and yet do believe. That's like the rest of us. It takes a special person who's willing to risk everything. And Simon Peter was one of those kind of people. I think, I think others are the first responders, the nurses, the people in the hospitals today battling this virus. They know every day when they go in, they're risking their lives, but they still do it because it's the right thing to do. The pilgrims, for example, for millennia and, and for uh, centuries, people have been willing to risk their not lives in the name of Jesus. It's not a new thing. It's been going on since the time of Jesus, and the pilgrims who came to this country, they risked their lives. They knew that getting on that boat to come from Europe to here, it was very risky. In fact, many, many, many of them died on that boat, but they were willing to risk their lives because of their belief in God and their desire to, to come together and worship God the way they wanted to do it. For multiple centuries and millennia, people have stood up for their faith and came together even though they knew that just by going to church, an opposing force could come and, and kill them, drag them out. They were willing to do it because of their strong belief in that resurrected Christ. The young girl at Columbine High School, she was a, uh, stood up strong for her faith when she had a gun in her face and she said, I believe in Jesus, and she was shot and killed for it. People are willing to be martyred because of their strong belief in the resurrected Christ. I believe, and I've been preaching for 40 years, that we need, because of the complacency that exists in our church world today, we need to take on the mantle, the idea, the beliefs of the first millennia Christians. We, we need to, 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 to go beyond the complacency that exists and, and bring about within our world and within our own hearts the fervor of the first millennia Christians and that kind of strength. In the early 1970s, Bishop Fulton Sheen said, Christendom is dead. He didn't say Christianity, he said Christendom. What he was talking about was the idea of countries providing safe havens, sanctuaries, if you will, for people of faith 
so that they can come together and practice their faith freely. He is risen. He is risen indeed. It is a reason for hope, confidence, and security. And it's been that way for 2,000 years. But in our world today, hopefully it's not becoming just a fairy tale that's used to mock people of faith. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Do we really believe this? Are we going to line the walls again soon or stay at home and make room? This is Mark Price. Thanks for listening. Happy Easter.